At a Dallas area event with local officials, Mark Cuban said that white people must have uncomfortable conversations about race. Cuban said from experience, the instinct when discussing race as a white person is to get defensive, but that must change to see progress made. So Shannon, do you find it difficult to discuss race with white people? I do. Because Skip, if you talk, if you talk all the way real about America and try to have an open and honest dialogue conversation with white America, yep. then it would go to the fact, it would tear down the very foundation, the very fabric in which America, they said America was built on. America was not built on freedom. America was built on racism. And the backbone, the lifeline, the economy of America was built on the backs of slaves. That is fact. Yep. And racism is so ingrained in America because, Skip, from the very first time when you brought those slaves over in 1619, you had someone to look down on. You robbed him of his given name. You robbed him of his dignity. You robbed him of his humanity. Mm -hmm. You told him he was less than. You treated him as less than. And then somehow you say, what? Mm -hmm. That America is what? America is how? He never, he never received that. You got 250 years of free labor. Yep. 250. Because, Skip, let me tell you how this works, Skip. Mm. When you hire someone to do something, either you can't do the job or you don't want to do the job. So which is it? So as America was thriving, mm -hmm. who was doing the work? The workers, it wasn't you. Mm. Not only were they working in the field, they were taking care of your kids before they could take care of their own. Mm. So this, this notion that America, well, uh -huh. white people, they, we did all this. No, you didn't. Skip, and, 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 and then you have to look. The greatest purveyor of racism and violence is the American white man. No race of people have suffered more on American soil than the black. No one to this day. Mm. So you had two. I mean, you, you could argue the Native Americans. The, 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 the skip. Yeah. They weren't enslaved for 250. No, no they were not. Now, it, it, they, they were just murdered often and their homes taken from them. But we, that's what I happened to us. I got it. And I'm just saying, from balance. Yeah. Yes. And the thing was, Skip, and they still did it. And they did it. Yeah. See, guess what they did? So they've been stealing and looting since the inception of America. True. So when you talk openly and honestly mm -hmm. about how what they did yep. to the American black, and they was like, oh, get over that. That was so long ago. That's ingrained. Mm. Years and years, Skip, where you don't have any income. So great-grandfathers had, had sons and sons and sons that had nothing. They had no wealth. While they were passing it down from generation to generation, he was a slave owner. His son was a slave owner. His son became a slave owner. Mm -hmm. His son became a slave owner. You see how that wealth kept going down the line? Mm -hmm. Well, we were having to start from scratch. And Skip, because, you know, you couldn't read. A lot of these guys, they couldn't read. And if they caught you reading, they beat you or they killed you. Mm. So it was. It took us a long time. And those were the ones who happened to be the few that overcame. Yep. So if we have open and honest conversation about what America is and how America came to be, how do you tell the story without telling them about the American slave and his significant role in American history? Mm. But they'll tell you about George Washington. Mm. They'll tell George Washington had slaves. They'll tell you about Thomas Jefferson. He owned slaves, too. But he wrote the Declaration. You see, Skip? But he wrote the Declaration of Independence. What about them slaves that he had? Mm. What about... He you, even had kids with him. Uh, yeah, and that wasn't by choice. Sadly, mm. him was 14 mm -hmm. years old. Yep. So, in other words, and he took across mm -hmm. state lines and I across seas for a moral purpose. Mm. But that's Skip. I don't want to get too far to that. But you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I so, do. if we tell the story of America in its totality, truthfully, honestly... White America can't deal with that, Skip, mm. because they want to feel that we discovered it because we wanted a better way of life and we yada, yada, yada. But that's not it. Mm. And so you're going to have to rewrite history. All those history books will have to be burned. Instead of, instead of sidebars and footnotes, the Amer African-American would have to feature, be featured very prominently. And I don't know if America really wants to do that. Mm. I really don't. Have you ever sat down and had a conversation with a white man about race relations like you just... No, had with because any time we talk about race, the first day they talk about, well, Shannon, what about the black on black crime? Mm. What about the violence in Chicago? You mm. see, it's always, Skip, I got to shift it. I don't want to talk about, uh, let's talk about this head on. Let's yeah. talk about what you did, how you robbed and mm -hmm. pillaged and looted uh, Native Americans of their land mm. and how you enslaved, brought men and women 
to, to, to cultivate this land, to grow the, Skip, cooking. Who did all the cooking? Miss mm -hmm. Mary ain't do no cooking. Mm. Who took care of the kids? She ain't take care of no kids. Mm. So, man, stop this. If, if you're going to tell the story, we're going to have to tell it in totality, Skip. Yeah. But we'll have to tell it honestly. Mm. And, uh, Skip, that's, for, that's 400 years. That's too much history. You over 401 years. You don't really want to rewrite that kind mm -hmm. of history. So where did you grow up? I grew up rural, in rural South rural Georgia. Rural South Georgia. And there were still around you some vestiges of plantation mentality. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah. And you grew up in that sort of circumstance where you felt it all around you. You, you actually, it, 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 you, you could feel it coming into your pores as a little kid. Yes. You got it yes. in ways some black people maybe in cities, couldn't quite experience the way Shannon Sharp Well, Skip, did. I grew up in there. The movie theater was, seg the movie theater, yes. it was, it was segregated. Okay. We sat up top. The whites sat down, uh, sat down low. That, that was, uh, we sat. It, it was funny, Skip, because at the beginning, when I was going to school, the black sat at the front of the bus, the white sat at the back of the bus. Mm -hmm. uh, the collect when we play, went outside to play, it was whites versus the blacks. Mm. There was not a whole lot of, of you know, we teamed up. It yep. was white basketball, kickball, softball, football, whatever it was. So, Skip, it was there. I mean, they tried to arrange it so, you know, the blacks would, but if it was left to us, because of what we felt, it would have been blacks on one side, whites mm. on the other side in the classroom. Mm. Okay, so now Mark Cuban has called out white people saying... You, you've got to give up your white privilege. You've got to quit trying to disqualify yourself by saying, well, I have a lot of black friends, as he's, I'm quoting Mark here, or, hey, I grew up in a mixed community, so I can't possibly be someone who takes advantage of white privilege. Okay? <laughs> and that's, I'm sure it's an attitude you've sensed from yeah. a lot of mm -hmm. white people. Right. Okay, because Mark has called out white people, that, that brings me, to my childhood and my upbringing, and I'm going to share it with you right now because to me it was the opposite of white privilege. The way I was raised was very differently, I believe, than many or maybe even most white people were raised. Okay. And I, I preface all this up front by saying if black people want to scoff at what I'm about to say, feel free. If black people want to disqualify what I'm about to say by saying you still have no idea what you're talking about, be my guest because it's highly possible I don't. If you want to disqualify what I'm about to say, please tell me because I know this. You and I have had a lot of conversations about race relations. Yes. We had one before the show this morning Yep. in many ways, shapes, and form. And one thing that I'm proudest of about our relationship is that I, I welcome every potential race topic because I love to listen to you and I love to learn from you. Mm -hmm. And I feel like even today, mm -hmm. I have learned a lot from you. I learned a lot from what you just told me across the table mm -hmm. just now. Okay, so back to my childhood. My mother was a wreck. I was the firstborn, so I took it right between the eyes. Mm -hmm. My father was a bigger wreck. So... Throughout my early childhood, four, five, six, seven, eight, I got left at my grandmother's where I was basically raised by a black woman. Her name was Katie Bell Henderson. She grew up in Alabama. Her grandparents were slaves, mm -hmm. but then she was raised for, in high school on the south side of Chicago. So she had Alabama and south side of Chicago. And she was tough and she was smart and she became my mother. I had no respect for anything my mother taught me because she didn't try to teach me anything. Everything I learned about right and wrong, black and white, I learned from Katie Bell. She worked for my grandmother who didn't have a lot of money because my grandmother traveled for her work. So Katie Bell ran her household. There were some grandkids who would come and go through the house, but my grandmother often wasn't there. So Katie Bell was the matron, she, she ran it all. So uh, I spent many nights with Katie Bell, many days with Katie Bell, watching the show she loved. The Edge of Night was her favorite soap <laughs> opera. You remember Gunsmoke? I do a, a remember weekly Gunsmoke. Yep. Western. Western. It always had a message to mm -hmm. it. So that's why she wanted me to watch Gunsmoke. Do you see what they're teaching mm -hmm. you here? Mm -hmm. So Katie Bell would even go so far as to take me occasionally to her AME church. You know AME churches? where I was the only white face in an all-black congregation. And 
They treated me with nothing but love. And it dawned on me later, the reason they did is because every black face in that congregation knew what it felt like to be the only black right. in, in, yes. in a congregation mm-hmm. of white people, being yes. around a bunch of white people, yes. right? Mm-hmm. And I felt a joy in those services. I felt a spirit. I felt an energy that I never felt in my own all-white church, mm-hmm. right? Right. So that was powerful to me and significant in my, my evolution to see that. She also, Katie Bell, would bring down her granddaughter every summer for the whole summer. Mm-hmm. Her granddaughter would stay at, at my grandmother's mm-hmm. house. So I, her name's Audrey, and, and she was exactly my age. So at six, seven, and eight, I'm, I'm spending summer afternoons in the backyard with Audrey making up silly games. Right. But we're talking about the south side of Chicago where she lived. Well, that's, listen, you want to talk about a blessing for me? So my hellish existence at, in my house oh. turned into silver lining because th- this is rare. What, what, what white kid could get that kind of an education? Right. Where I'm not just with Katie Bell. I'm, she's my authority figure. So everything she's teaching me, I'm, I'm, I'm taking in because I don't know any better. She, she, I'm going to do nothing but respect her right. because she proved right away. She knew way more than my mother did. So one fateful afternoon, a cousin was over, and I, as usual, because I was always getting into skirmishes with others, I got into one with my cousin, and within earshot of Katie Bell Henderson, my cousin blurts out, calls me the N-word. I nearly died on the spot. (laughs) I knew all about what that word meant. Right. And I had spoken about it with Katie Bell. Mm -hmm. She stopped what she was doing, 